It is Thursday. That means she has mean bank is in the building looking bum as usual. Those shoes. Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> they are so fire. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Ah, uh, Sante. Lakini najua imekuwa kitambo ni kuona. Do you do you know what I was doing while you were introducing? What were you doing? Why? Cuz my colleague said I'd lipstick on my teeth. Oh, okay. No, it's gone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> It's gone, 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 gone. <laughs> so last week we didn't answer all of the questions. Yes. And we'll get to do that today. And um, but generally we're talking about how to date, right? But first yes. we'll start with the questions. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So let's just get to it. The questions. Where are you? Okay, here we go. So. Oh, wait, not I that one. I feel like one. I've got so comfortable, I want to, like, tuck a foot in. Are you serious, Jasmine? You know? <laughs> okay, here we go. Hi, Mukali. I'm Nancy. I've been dating this guy for almost two years. We've been talking. And at the start uh, of this, uh, I think we answered this. Uh, hi, Mukali. Our seven-year-old marriage has become toxic. Both of us are abusive. How do I move out with three kids and no stable job? Oh, this is one that is so, so, so common. The first thing I would turn around and say is when, you, you, when you're both in an abusive situation, one of you is always the stronger one to be able to stop that situation. Is it verbally abusive? Is it physically abusive? Because first, if it's physically abusive, then you want to be able to leave immediately because mm -hmm. you don't know if tomorrow could be worse than it was in the moment right now. The first advice I always say, as hard as it is for so many people is, you have to start back at basic, back home, back to your family, back to your parents, back to a support system you can trust mm -hmm. and you can know that if I come back here, it allows me to breathe. It gives me a moment to be able to reflect on what I'm even going through. Because when you're in a situation like this, you don't even digest. You don't even put together what you are going through. You just know this situation is bad. It's a red blinking light. I need mm. to get out. You've not processed how it even makes you feel. Okay. But I would also turn around and be able to tell him that the situation that I'm in right now is toxic and because we have a child, I'm having this conversation with you because at some point you are going to have to be in this child's life, whether we like it or we don't. So you've got to start back with who can you go live with immediately? How can you move out? Is it a best friend? Is it going back to the church and telling them, this is my situation, I need help for now? Mm -hmm. And then look at what it is you can do. Because I know a lot of people just immediately freeze in a situation of, I'm not earning, I can't do anything, and that's not true. Mm -hmm. While your first situation is to be able to leave so that your mind can calm down, there definitely is something you can do. Even if it's not getting into your gift or your passion immediately, yes. but there's anything you can offer. And I tell a lot of people, look, if right now you're sitting at home and you've got a gift or a talent you can offer, you're not earning being at home right now, yeah. offer your service for free mm. because at some point that will convert into currency in another way. Sometimes you just need your foot into a door to do something. So this goes for all the women that are sitting there right now saying, I cannot leave such a dire situation because I'm not earning. That cannot be your full stop. You can do it. I did it 24. You can do it in whatever situation you're in. It's about, do I get the waitress job? Do, yes. Who do I ask? What is my network? What is my family network? Find something that just gets you earning a little bit because that raises your confidence <coughs> more yes. than the salary that will be coming in. Okay. There's a way out. You don't need yeah. to just stay in because you feel like you don't have a job. Good morning. I'm in a relationship with a guy who's always busy. We don't communicate. And whenever I call him, he's like, I'm tired. Am I being so desperate and pressurizing? And could this relationship lead to marriage? Because I really love him, but he seems to be feeling, huh? but he seems not to be feeling the same for me. What should I do? This is Mary from Kiambu. Beautiful, Mary. And you know, this is the thing. Sometimes yeah. even the best relationships, somebody does get tired. 
and it's not you know it's like we're in this culture where okay if a little bit is going wrong yes. or I'm not getting exactly what I feel I should get in my value system with my rules then I feel like it's over or it's not working if you put in a little more work into a relationship yeah. it can grow and you can lay a thicker foundation talk to him tell him that I can see you're busy I can see you're tired first of all what can I do for you what do you need of me because a lot of the times we don't realize sometimes guys especially since covid they are overcharged they are working really 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 hard mm. and they just need sometimes to be able to focus on work and say i'm exhausted and i've got somebody that just has me because sometimes you don't have the effort to put everything out there and you are genuinely tired mm. and then you feel i have to come home and emotionally <coughs> fill somebody also i don't know how to do that for myself as a guy right now i'm yeah. completely depleted and the thought of me having to do that for you doesn't mean i don't love you it mm. just means the language has changed a little bit if you are feeling this way communicate it it's something i also do with my husband he's also been ridiculously busy but i wouldn't give up on that yes. situation i'll turn around and say what can i do for you and then i'll find the right moment to say i just want more of your time i want more of your energy i can feel the rift and sometimes the rift is not filled but someone saying i know i know i've been like that right now give me a little room allows you both to understand we're on the same page mm -hmm. and right now in the relationship it's just an orange it just needs two people to understand it don't give up on him easily okay. communicate it mm -hmm. and make that effort to see how you both can go to another stage of your relationship here shaz how do you have such good answers <laughs> it's like what how experience okay cool and then <laughs> personal experience <laughs> Uh <clears throat> where are we? Hi Mikali, I've been in a situation for one year. Initially, the guy had the intention of wanting to date me, but the parents intervened since I'm a tenant in their plot. Because of this, we found ourselves in a defined thing. It has been stressing uh with a lot of emotions. I've been praying God to guide us because I was hoping we would go to the other level. We both feel drained from the undefined thing. We decided to take time and explore and we find ourselves together. He said we will define things. What do you think? Okay, wait. So they wanted to be together together, but then this lady is a tenant where they live, where this, I think this guy lives with the parents. Okay. So the parents intervened and they they did not become or they did not get into a relationship so they had a, they had a thing that wasn't defined right and now she's feeling stranded the guy is feeling drained so they've decided to go their own ways and they've said that if they find themselves together again then they will define it then so i find that interesting cuz what what is defined mm. what is her definition okay which maybe he didn't think was a definition or needed a definition or he thought if we're together we're together because i had an interesting question yesterday which was do we ask somebody out like will you be my girlfriend will you be my boyfriend is it supposed to be like that or times have changed oh. because if you ask my 17 year old he won't even look up at you he just be <laughs> like you guys are really old we don't do that <laughs> so i'm going to take a key from that and say Maybe you guys were in a relationship, maybe things were working, and maybe the parents intervening was your first step at strengthening mm. the two of you. Okay. For the two of you to be able to say our parents intervening is like going to be a bit of the noise of society as well. Mm -hmm. But what do we want as a couple? What do we need to redefine together? Because maybe I have a definition that's making the rule of this relationship too difficult okay. and maybe you have a completely different view on how the relationship should be and I might be draining you. So I would advise you that instead of waiting for the relationship to find you again because yeah. clearly that's what you want. Yes. How about try? Go for it. Yes, make the relationship what you two want. Mhm. Mm so recreate your definition mm -hmm. and then politely move the noise out and use noise to strengthen the two of you because there's going to be so much of it. Wait till you have your first child together. The whole world's going to tell you how to raise it. That's a lot of noise. Yeah. So find your footing now. Don't give up on that relationship.
one more question before we go on a break. Um, hi, Wakali. I've been married for four years, but my husband has never prioritized me. It's always him first, then the children, then me. Is that how it's supposed to be? So it's not supposed to be. But in a lot of situations sometimes, what you feel or how you feel you should look like a priority sometimes isn't vocalized to him in the right way. Maybe he thinks he's putting you as a priority as the typical male does. I'm working hard. Mm. I'm providing for the children. I'm doing the best I can. And sometimes when we communicate it wrong to guy, it can go, I'm not doing enough. Okay. I'm not good enough. Mm. I thought doing this is what you needed. I thought being the man and being able to give you a bit of a break by showing up this way in a way that drains me that nobody understands yeah. is making you a priority. But sometimes it's also the way we say it. It's to be able to say that I love how you provide. I love you put the children first because you know mm. what? For a change, a man is putting the children first. Otherwise, women have to educate the man on how to even have a relationship with the children. But guess what? I feel I want more of your attention in a new way. We're married, we've settled. I think we've got into a beautiful, comfortable bubble. I'm thinking that let's start doing something different once a week because research has shown that for a couple to thrive, yes. they just need to spend 90 minutes a week of a week. alone given time, Okay, which means there's no phones, it's just you and me, we're not discussing the day, we're just reconnecting in any other way that we can, 90 minutes a week. Imagine if you spent more. That would be amazing. Exactly. So that's the tip, 90 minutes and a week. sometimes mm -hmm. you know we want men to make us feel a certain way or yes. we want them to bring in romance yes sometimes do it yourself you want the romance bring the breakfast up in bed you want to feel special you know you want to create time i had a week last week where i felt i hardly spoke to my husband we were just like catching up with the week mm -hmm. and so on sunday i made breakfast and i took it up and i was like we are carving this time okay. and what that automatically did was ah this means no phones this means we're going to sit on the carpet and we're just going to catch up so instead of feeling you didn't do we didn't have create it okay Go for it. Yes. I feel like we've already gotten into the topic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the right way to date. We're going to pick up from that after this very short break. Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mukali Thursday edition. We have Shazmin in the building. We are all matters relationship. And today we are talking about what is the right way to date? How should we date? Have we even been doing it right? Is there a formula to it, Shazmin? Yes. Okay, cool. There is. So Larry King started with yes. one of them, which was learn to listen. Okay. But the other thing when you're dating, and this is a tip for people who are actually on a date, Mm -hmm. Learn to also ask questions as much as you give information about yourself. Because okay. research showed that a lot of the times people go on the first date and they're thinking, I just want to you know, ask you questions. I want to show you I'm so interested. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the date, they walk away. And Matthew Hussey was saying people walked away feeling so much less disconnected. Mm -hmm. And he's like, when I looked into it, I saw that people were so intrigued to listen to the other person, mm -hmm. but they didn't give off themselves at all. Oh. So they walked away feeling like I didn't get anything out of this. I got okay. everything about you, but I just sort of feel like I couldn't connect with you. And I couldn't connect with you because you didn't get a chance to know me either. Okay. So as much as you listen, learn to give off yourself as well. Okay. But the first tip I would say to everyone listening right now is learn initially not to put the person you begin dating on the highest pedestal. 
Okay. And a lot of people end up putting them way higher than they should because you completely fantasize this person more than you even know them. You walk away from meeting someone, you've got all these chemicals in the body, you feel great, you've Im imagined life with them, you've pictured what life would look like with them Babies. in the kitchen, all of that. <laughs> and you're just thinking this person is the most amazing person in the world. Yes. But what that does is it doesn't allow you to really get to know them okay. in the real way that you should. Because what also happens is the minute you put someone on such a high pedestal and then after the first date, there's no second date, you're actually suffering deep heartache because you felt you went all into a relationship that wasn't even beginning yet. Mm. So be careful about that. The other thing I would tell everybody right now that's looking at dating we date with one foot in and one foot out. Mm -hmm. We're waiting to be safe. See, if I'm not putting you on a pedestal, yes. then I'm also protecting myself. Exactly. So I'll just be like, you know. I'll see. <laughs> and, and I feel that's great. Yes. It's great to be able to say, I'm not going to give all my attention and time just to one person right now. Doesn't mean I'm going to date 50 people at the same time. Okay. But sometimes the option of not closing out immediately until you both have felt like I'm getting the vibe from you, mm. we are going to be an item. Because what I've seen so much with people is we're dating, we're talking, we've gone out a couple of times, but we're not talking as much as I wanted during the week. I'm not getting the calls back. Or sometimes, every time we're going to meet, we meet because I'm the one pushing it. Yes. Every time we talk, it's because I'm the one always calling. Mm. So I'm sort of feeling right now that is there anything if I was to walk away? And then you're feeling very loyal about the situation, which means I'm going to just put myself here and give myself to you. But they're not feeling or reciprocating the same way. Yeah. So maybe sometimes it's okay to be able to say, I'm talking to two, three people. I'm not dating them. Yes. I just have a couple of my <coughs> options open to be able to say what is working and what's not. And the fine, thin line with that yes. is when I tell people that means there's no physical anything's nothing yeah it's not 10 o'clock at night no. so get with the physical <laughs> intimacy is not happening yes and the reason is the minute you go on these first dates and they end up with the peer pressure of self which is i have to give myself because then maybe i'll connect with you mm. then maybe you'll feel because i physically slept with you immediately or after the second third date mm -hmm. maybe you like me more maybe this will mean now we're one Okay. And then you hit the platform off. They are not replying back. Yes. I feel like I'm getting ghosted. I don't understand why. The first couple of times was great. Mm. Straight after, and it's so easy. I ask them immediately, did you sleep together? Yes. And then they ghosted you. Yes. But everything was great before that. Mm. Yes. It's because before that, it's the little trailer. You both are playing this little trailer to see what will we look like together. Yes. But you don't give in each other enough of a chance to be able to see, are we creating a series? Mm -hmm. Are we creating a movie together? Where's our life going? Would it be so hard to hold out on the physical intimacy to be able to say, are we really building emotional intimacy right now? Am I feeling connected enough to you? Do I want a second date? Am I understanding who you really are? Mm. Is there enough depth coming out of these first couple of dates? Because first of all, there's so much pressure on the first date. Yes. A lot of pressure on the guys. The guys feel it has to be perfect. It's got to be fancy. It needs to be really expensive. But a tip for women, guys love a woman that is so easy. They love a woman they can just call and say, let's go for something so easy, throw on a hoodie. There's nothing to a man that's more sexy than the ease of you being casual. Okay. So a lot of the pressure needs to come off <coughs> that first date on having to be expensive and having it to be perfect. Yeah. And maybe you want it to, but you might find I'm dating someone where our personalities clash the wrong way. So I could put a lot of money into this and it's not gonna go anywhere. And then think about, am I with somebody for the wrong reason? Ah. So are they with me because it mm. looks like I can fancy the hell out of their lives? Mm -hmm. Or 
some of the tips I've given guys before is, what if you took her for something more casual? Okay. What if you guys went for bowling, or mm. you did a bit of the ice skating, or you did the casual coffee? It's playful, so your yes. gut is down at some point and get to see the real you. Exactly. Yeah. And she's not thinking of, okay, you could be the next guy that's funding my life, and yes. you're not the guy that's hurting feeling, is she only there for me for that, and should I be doing that as mm. a guy? Because mm. guys really deal with that. That is so true. And the other thing is for guys. A lot of men suffer with the rejection of no. So they don't even go to ask the girl out. And sometimes it's, you know, finding a common interest. It could be we've talked and I found the courage to approach you mm. and I've learned something about you. <coughs> I've learned you love museums or you love going for coffee or you love the national park. So maybe the way I ask you out is, it'd be great to do one of those with you. Are mm. you up for that? Mm. How about next week? Mm. But research and science shows that for a lot of people that get rejected, pain of rejection is equal to physical pain. So when you actually get physically, you know, you stub your toe and you're yes. in pain, it's the same pain that yeah. the body registers as mm. rejection. Mm. And that's why sometimes people say no more. I don't want to do it because it really does hurt. And so for even women who are softly telling a man no, to be able to put yourself in that situation and think, okay, he could really take this the wrong way and maybe I could say no in a more beautiful way. Okay. And for the person who asks you out, mm -hmm. if someone says no, it's great because they save you the time, yes. the effort yes. and the energy of mm. chasing them. Yeah. And all it's doing is pushing you in a better direction of finding the person you want. But then it's dating for grown-ups versus dating for children. Okay. Because right now, everyone's dating. Mm. Everyone's dating all the time. The littlest things go wrong, and I can replace you immediately. immediately. But you want to date to be able to think, am I dating to find the right person? Am I dating to find someone who's going to be the companion of my life? Because 95% of your happiness falls on finding the right person partner so everyone will tell you in life be happy be whole mm. find yourself before you find the right person number one you'll never fully find yourself because that's a journey you'll never fully be whole it's always a process any single relationship you will get into will have different triggers but the right relationship will allow you to work on those triggers together will give you the room to let stuff come up, will give you both the room to give each other time to find mm. a new way mm. of getting whole with each other. Because I love, I love the whole thing that's thrown around right now. Don't date until you're fully whole. <laughs> right, but you're never going to be fully whole. Because you're, it's not a destination. Exactly. Every single situation will bring something different out in you. So what if you're dating now to say, I, I do know who I am. Mm -hmm. I know who I am in the sense of I know my self-worth. Yes. I know my self-esteem should be here and I'm working on that. Okay. I know what I'm looking for in a partner. I have a generally good list of who I'd like to be if I find that partner. Because a lot of people have the list mm -hmm. of this is what I want, this is who you should be. But then that person also deserves the best of, of you. you. Are you doing that to yourself? Exactly. Would you date to you? Exactly. Mm. And so that is why when you're dating somebody or you're looking for somebody, know your vision. Okay. So the exercise I'd tell everyone right now would be... I feel like we should take our pen. And yes. <laughs> at home you should. Sit down and actually write out, what does my ideal relationship look like? What would it look like on a daily basis? What would I love to experience? And actually get excited about it. Because science shows when you can put emotion into a moment, the brain doesn't know that moment doesn't exist. Yes. And so that's why emotion is motion. Mm. It will bring to you what you're looking for. Because when you can feel this is the relationship I want, the signal people say of, why do I keep attracting that kind of a guy? Why do I keep attracting that kind of a woman? Mm -hmm. It's because you're not clear on your vision. You're in so much conflict. You're going to attract the person that sees you as, 
I need to solve conflict mm. or this person is conflict and so am I. So we would work great together. Which sometimes does work because yes. nothing's ever wrong. It just shows you that that's not what I want and I want more of something else. So clear vision of a relationship, one you can feel, one you can visualize. How would I feel every single day with this person? And then sometimes allow room for that to mm. come, or allow, allow room for that to happen. So clear vision, make a list of who you'd like, make a list of who you'd like to become. Okay. And then think about when I'm dating, is this really someone that fits a profile I can see in the long term? Because you've got the beautiful generation of 19 to 25 that feels I have so much time, so I'll date a lot. Yeah. In the process of dating a lot, I don't realize I'm breaking a little bit every single mm. time. I'm hurting all over. Yes. I'm losing vulnerability. I'm showing up in the next relationship with a mask because there's so much pain from this one. I'm not doing it all over again. So, you know what, I'm just going to wait and see what this brings. But then I feel sometimes when you're dating, the most beautiful thing you can bring, especially for women, yeah. masculine men love the feminine essence that shows up because they feel not that I want to take care of like you're weak, mm -mm. but this is something I'd love to nurture and yes. I'd love to take care of. So think about when you're on the date, is there polarity? Is this someone who has beautiful masculine energy and is a gentleman? Is this someone that's bringing out the real essence in me? Because a lot of the times, you know, we go through the trailer phase, which is I'm going to show you the marketing phase, but it's not going to last. So what if you showed up as you yeah. and you put all that effort away and just saw, does this person see me and love me for who I am? Because oh. that's the best I can offer you. Which dates were like the way she has me is explaining right now. But I don't know what you guys are going through. Are you dating? Is it easy? Is it hard? Have you experienced what Shazmin has been talking about? Basically, have you been dating the right way? And if you have any questions whatsoever around that, and there's one common question that people ask, how long is uh, too long? Mm. when it comes to dating so we'll be getting into that after this very short commercial break send in your questions triple one triple four triple one we'll be answering those as well Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali. A very good morning to you. We are talking matters, relationships, and how we are dating. Are we doing it the right way? And Shaz is a well of wisdom. <laughs> and listening to her, looking back at when I was dating, um, yeah, definitely was doing it the wrong way. So... <laughs> Uh, we posted a question on Facebook and the question was, is it possible to develop feelings for another person while still in a relationship? And this came in as a question from last week. So we posted there and uh, the other question is, what are your thoughts on the culture of dating multiple people at one time? And I don't know if you answer fast or I just go through the feedback. Yeah, so okay. don't date multiple <laughs> people the wrong way. And that's why I said there's a thin line. Because people will be like, you're giving... Shazman Bang said I can date multiple people at the same time, which no. means I'm sleeping with you and you and you and you. That's a no, lie. yeah. Just get to know people, yes. learn people, be open to knowing people. Mm. Instead of sometimes if you feel I'm not getting direction from this one person, yeah. I'm still open yes. to something with somebody else. I'm not dealing with heartache that doesn't deserve the heartache yet. Mm. Yeah. This reminds me, uh, Zulu used to say that, uh, still says, hmm. uh, their interviews this dating, this getting to know people. <laughs> yes. And interviews happen in boardrooms, not in bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens during the day. <laughs> so please. <laughs> um, last does not make one unique. It rather makes one a he goat, which can even meet all its siblings, including its own mother. What? Robbie Swat? Who are you? Uh, Victor Musa says it's God given nature to men. Even David was attracted to... What? Where I, I, are you? Who come are, here. Come, who are you talking, right who are you talking the to, screen. Jasmine, today? Right through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> They're using the Bible now. Um, uh, David uh, was attracted to Bathsheba, someone's wife, and yet Pia Yeye alikuwa meowa already. 
si kupenda kwetu aki Wait, but how did David's story end? Oh yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It finish finish the whole Bible yeah, verse. Because Not I think he had to heavily repent for this because yeah, yeah. Yeah. So exactly. To finish, finish. <laughs> uh, so we have another question here for you Shazmin. Um, hi, Shazmin and Mikali. I'm Mary from Nakuru. I'm in a relationship where the guy has changed. Um, doesn't have time for me. <laughs> and I'm the one who always starts the conversation. He's not the same like before when we started dating. Like, I feel like he doesn't love me anymore. And I think you slightly touched on this when you're talking about the right way to date. You know, the thing, the thing is the minute we start to feel someone's not giving me that level of love. Yes. I'm out or there's no love or love shifts, love changes. It's going to look different all the time. You're changing, I'm changing. We're both dealing with different emotions in our lives. Sometimes it's as simple as being able to say that to someone. Mm. I turn around and tell people, you can so eloquently tell me how you feel. What if you did that to the person you were with? Exactly the way you said it to me, you said it to them because sometimes in a beautiful way, sometimes guys don't realize that mm -hmm. they're doing it. They've got into the comfort zone. I've got the woman. Now I can focus on career. I can focus on work. There are other things to also do. And sometimes it's to bring them right back and say, uh-uh, mm. we don't just stop here. We need to keep growing. I want to feel alive. I want our relationship to fully be passionate all the single time. And sometimes it does take one person to be the leader, to be the person to reignite it, to say it, to speak it. But then when you feel that I'm doing this, I'm bringing it to your attention, I'm making the effort, but I'm not getting that feedback from you at all, okay. then I feel that's the mild, polite way of the beginning of ghosting. Mm. It's he doesn't know how to probably also end it. He doesn't know how to let you down. Is he looking at other options? Because that's become so easy right now. The minute the relationship gets comfortable, and it's not boring, it's comfortable. Yeah. It's where everyone should want to be. Yes. People start to feel the side eye from the other chick, the mm. wink from the other guy. It sort of ignited me, made Excites me feel ex you. exactly. Mm. But for how long? Yeah. Because it took work for the two of you to get here. It's going to take work or nothing at all for you guys to just get a little bit from somebody else, which is easy for anyone. What's not easy is to make what you have work. So I would tell her, communicate it. Yes. If he starts to keep behaving this way for a while, tell him, communicate that I'm not appreciating the way you are, so I'm not gonna push this anymore, and I'm gonna give you some time. Mm. Because there's, as much as how long is dating, yes. there's also how long do I take being ghosted ah. or mildly ghosted. Okay. And so okay. ghosting is literally after three days <laughs> when you've tried once or twice yes. and you're just not getting any feedback at all. After three days, mm -hmm. let it go. Okay. And then there's a way to come back from ghosting. Oh. Yes, because ghosting is actually a psychological type of manipulation because it has people completely question their self-esteem and their self-worth. And that's yes. what everyone's dealing with now. Why? It's so easy to block you to double tick yes. you, to politely like you on Instagram and Facebook, not, but not to reply you on WhatsApp. So it's a thing, it's very easy. It's the human way of not having to deal with because social media and the electronics will do it for you. So there's mm. also a way to come back from that, which mm. is after three days, I've tried one more time. I know I did it. I'm going to let you know now, wish you all the best and I'm glad. I'm glad this has happened because it's allowed me to be able to move on and hopefully try with somebody else after a while. Is it, is it okay? That's the only way I know how to walk away from stuff? It's Rob not. Mm -hmm. It's not, but beautiful because, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday and helping them understand. They asked, why is it every time we hit a really tough fight, yes. this guy will break up with me? And knowing who this person is, understanding how they've grown up, understanding their childhood, I was able to explain to her that this is where we get into attachment styles. Yes. He is a full avoidant. So I want you to think of every time things get tough, he's the tortoise, he goes into his shell. 
but no one's taught him that when you go into your shell, you're supposed to reflect. You're supposed mm. to think about how am I supposed to be? How can we change the situation? Instead, what he does is he pops his head out after a day or two and hopes the sun's out. <laughs> <laughs> the hailstorm has gone away. Protesting, screaming's died out. Yes. It's safe to start walking slowly again. Oh. Right. But you're walking to fire because you've yes. given her two days to burn. Yes. So I had her understand that that's just his mechanism because he's never known how to communicate and how to talk. Okay. And so when she was able to understand that, she was able to call him and talk to him in the way we discussed. And he broke down and he cried and he said, I'll get better at it. But what a lot of people do is they give up in that moment. Mm. Sometimes you have to also understand the person because, you know, we've got so good as society to say, Toxic people fit here, mm. healthy, good people fit here. Yeah. But that toxic person is wearing armor. That toxic person, their inner child is wounded, is broken. They don't know how else to be. Yeah. This is the defense mechanism they've grown up with. They've learned manipulation, they've learned control because somebody did it to them. And then somewhere in their adolescence, they had enough of it and decided to do it to other people and it saved them from the pain of this side of the world. So when we go and label people into this side, we need to be able to think that, what if they had a chance at life? Mm. What if someone loved them in a different way? What if someone lo loved them through their wounds okay. and people could change? So you never know in situations like this. Wow. Mm. See the way you're smiling at yourself. <laughs> you know that was a powerful one, right? <laughs> um, hi, Mikali. I'm a single mom of two. Was dating a single dad of two. But the guy went silent for no reason. I never uh, offended him in any way. I spoke to his friend and he told me that he was going through emotional and health challenges. It's two months now. Can this work? I would turn around and say, look, if a guy can tell another guy this is what I'm going through, mm -hmm. then sometimes they owe it to you as well to tell you this is what I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay if we took a break? Because I feel that saves you the heartache of sitting there wondering, what did I do? Yes. What didn't I do? I don't understand what went wrong. Is something wrong with me? So if he can do that with his friend, then he could have shown you the same amount of respect. But maybe, maybe you could reach out and you could turn around and say, if depending on what you both shared, mm -hmm. only you would know that. Okay. And say that, look, I understand this is what you're going through. And you know what? Maybe as a man, it's hard for you to show emotion. Maybe I'm triggering something from your previous relationship. I was okay to take it slow, but just this complete silence hasn't worked for me. And I just wanted to let it go on a beautiful note. And maybe sometimes that little push could get the right guy in the right direction. But you got to know, you got to be able to trust your gut to be able to say, He's blanked me and ghosted me in the wrong way. Yes. And I deserve my self-dignity to walk away as well. Or sometimes does this need a little push with the guy? Okay. Interesting question here. I have dated three men so far. And the funny thing is that they are all Muslims. And my dad never appreciated them. Now, what should I do in this matter? You can't help who you fall in love with. You can't help who you date. Maybe it's to understand your father's point of view. What is your fear, dad? Is your fear I'll convert? Is your fear the typical Muslim, I'll become the wife that sits at home, that might not be able to breathe, that will be suffocated? What's your fear, dad? So start there because you'll understand the wisdom of your dad and then see, does my dad's wisdom match the men I'm dating? Because if it's your third ma ma man, yeah. mm -hmm. think about what went wrong with the first one, what went wrong with the second one. Is there something different with this guy? Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you're not going out saying, are you a Muslim? <laughs> okay, yeah, no. no. You're falling in love with somebody the way that they are and who they're showing you that they are. But look deeper. I yeah. would match what my dad says versus is it true with what I've experienced or what I'm experiencing? Okay. Um, when we talk about dating, so we've gone through the whole process of what the first date should look like and you talked about how we should be uh, more listen more to what the other person has to and say and give and give as well yes and uh, when we start officially to date should we set goals is, th is that the time to set up a vision for this is how you start dating
Slowly. <laughs> okay. Slow. Because uh-huh. everyone wants it perfect so fast. Yes. Go slow. See, do I feel comfortable with this person? See if I can open up to this person. Give the dating some time. It's not going to be perfect the minute you meet. You won't, mm. you know, explode all parts of you. You won't want to give all parts of you. He can't open up all parts of him yet. Yes. Take things slow. There's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy the process. Don't put things before they should happen. Don't make things wrong before it is wrong. Mm-hmm. And the worst thing is don't sabotage something that could potentially be beautiful. Just go slow. slow. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are we? Um, hi, I'm Wikali. I'm Shiku. There's a guy whom uh, we, I've been in love with for a year, but I feel he's not the man I would love to be my husband. But I am in fear of leaving him because he doesn't know how to handle such <clears throat> in his life. We'll just go with heartbreak mm. instead of the word. Mm. Yeah. Well, I turn around and say you owe it to him. Mm. You owe it to him. Anyone who's in a relationship right now mm-hmm. with somebody they feel this is not potentially going to go somewhere. Yeah. This is the beautiful part. We stop being selfish and we set the other person free. Okay. Because while you are pulling away emotionally and mentally, they might not be. <coughs> And you're leaving someone feeling, how do I get closer? You're doing this and you're having somebody else feel that's the effort I have to make to reach you. And Mm -mm. it's not fair. If you recognize this is not someone I want to be with, then they could be husband or wife material for someone else. Be honest and tell them, I love everything about you. Yes. It doesn't mean that because I don't want you as my potential wife or husband or somebody I want to spend the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean something's wrong with you. That's why we dated. That's why we tried. So we don't end up married and in more pain. And I don't want to do that to you. So I love everything about you, but I feel I have things I want to work on. And, and allow them the platform to ask questions because it's not fair to just dump someone after a year. They're going to wonder why exactly mm. give them room to ask it and have the respect to honor <coughs> one year worth off. I can give you two hours of my time yes. to let you go beautifully. Okay. Okay. Hi, Mikali. Please ask Shazmin, how do you know that you are dating the right guy? You will know. Mm. Science shows we have a second brain, and the second brain lives in the stomach. Huh? Yes, this okay. is another conversation. But the <laughs> quick point to it is, <laughs> when we say that trust your gut feeling, yes. there's a reason it's trust your gut feeling. Mm. Because there's a part of you that inside of there lives that gives off emotion, that picks up vibration, that picks up energy from different people. Yes. You will know immediately, first of all, do you feel safe? Because for women, it's, do I feel safe? Do I feel seen? And is this person listening to me? Are they making me feel safe, seen, and listening to me because it's the beginning of that relationship? Mm -hmm. And what does it look like on a normal day? Who are we on a normal day? Is this person making an effort to message, to check in on me? Because I have so many people that turn around and say, what do you do with someone you're dating? And they turn around and tell you, sorry, I couldn't talk to you for two, three, day, three days because I was so busy. Yes. But you ate and you showered and you got in a car and you checked your phone and you did a couple of things, which meant you could have found time for me. That's yes. already a red flag in dating on its own. So you will know, how do I feel with this person? What do they bring out in me? Am I feeling a little scared? What's below the fear? Is the fear a little excitement that this could be potential? You will always know whether it's a yes and whether it's a no. And if in doubt, ask the right girlfriend, the girlfriend that wants you to win, the girlfriend that, you know, I will give you advice based on really what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm the girlfriend that's okay to also tell you you're wrong. Okay. Ask that kind of a girlfriend her opinion as well. What about the guy? How do they know? Guys know. (laughs) (laughs) 
Guys, they know before. <laughs> I like how, you know, we give men the pass of you don't really know. Yes. But men know. They men, do. Men are sharp. Men are clever. You have guys who turn around and say, yes, I knew it. I knew she was the one when I met her. It's true. They really do. It's just sometimes we don't understand the fear guys have mm. to live with because they spend most of the time dealing with consistent rejection all the time, yeah. not only from a woman, but life and work and everything else in their worlds. So they deal with a lot more emotion that they don't even know how to translate verbally. Yes. But for guys, you will know. First of all, look for a woman that doesn't want you for your money. Look for a woman that, if you do have money, wants to see you make more of it. She wants to be part of your empire. Okay. Your empire is who you are. She mm -hmm. wants to be part of your beacon. Find a woman that will be the one that, you know, when you're a little lost, can turn you two millimeters and say, this is where we blink together. And guys will know I'm looking for the right person. Not just the candy on the arm, mm. but the woman who can be so much more. The mother to my children. The woman who will understand the craziness of my parents. The woman who will stand by me when I don't even know who I am as a man sometimes. That's who you want to look for. Oh, and our time is up. <laughs> yeah, well, Thursday is, you know, it's too short. Is it? Yes. What? We've just started. <laughs> <laughs> Your parting shot says me. I would turn around to anybody that wants to get into the dating field and I'd say, go into it with vulnerability. It's so easy to play safe because I understand the heartache that comes with putting yourself out. But maybe the last time you put yourself out could be the time you find someone that says, this is the person I want to be with. They're so real. They know who they are. And I want to be part of their journey as they figure out even more of it. But you got to be vulnerable and vulnerability will bring, bring pain and pain brings uncertainty and no relationship will ever be certain but you can be certain about who you are and what effort you want to make so you say we put ourselves out there yes. bear our soul yes mm. social media Shazman Bank on Instagram, Twitter is Bank Shazman, website is www.shazmanbank.com podcast, visual inspira inspiration, blogs, just reach out to me. And send your questions as well. Yes. Because she will DM you. <laughs> she will answer all of them. We are grateful that you joined us today and every other Thursday. But night now, we need to pay our bills. Let's take a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Yeah.